I have come to Africa originally to meet the locals, to see and learn about their culture and to mingle with them, as you will see in my other videos. This is exactly what I have done. So when I came to Windhoek, the capital city of Namibia, and I have seen the contradictive difference that you see the way the local Germans live, and then you see just five minutes away, which is the township of Katatura, where the real African Namibian locals live, it really strikes you. And you cannot take a blind eye while you see that and thinking to yourself, asking yourself, how come nobody is doing something to help the locals here? Namibia! 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 Hi guys, my name is Peace and I'm traveling around the world, so let's peace out and go. So good morning to you all from the Avis Reserve in Namibia. It's right out of Windhoek, the capital city of Namibia. What a beautiful atmosphere and a beautiful place to sit here and conclude a vlog for my trip in Namibia. Well, after more than three weeks in Namibia, I think it is time to reflect back and uh, talk Namibia, as we say. So I have made ready a little list and uh, I will divide uh, this vlog in two. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the entire trip, uh, talk what's good about Namibia, I'll give you a little idea about this magnificent country and uh, in regards to visiting here, traveling to Namibia and then we'll talk a little, you know, a little more in depth about maybe a little bit of the history here and uh, a little politics should we say. So let's start off or as I say usually, let's peace out and go. So Namibia, I would say, is one of the most beautiful countries in the African continent. It is, in certain, one of the driest countries in the sub-Saharan Africa. It has a population of only about just two and a half million people, but it's a huge, big country with a lot of land and a lot of animals and beautiful, beautiful landscapes and sceneries. Well. Let me tell you something, if you are planning to visit Namibia, the one thing you should know, well, it might be a costly uh, trip. It's not a cheap uh, trip to come here. Uh, I'm not talking about staying here. First, I'm talking about taking a flight, booking tickets and coming to Namibia. Wherever you are from, uh, if you're not from around Africa, it might be quite a costly uh, trip. But after being here for three weeks, I'm telling you from my experience, this is a one-in-a-lifetime experience that you should not put away, okay? It's a dream come through for me, but you should do it no matter how much it costs. You should save yourself some money and come to Namibia. And I'll tell you all about it right now. So, first of all, you should know that when you come here, uh, the distances are very great from one uh, destination to another. So, I have covered around 5,000 kilometers uh, being here in uh, just about three weeks because if you want to drive up uh, you know from central Namibia from Windhoek which is the capital to the north and then down south to the west and everywhere else there's a lot to see and uh, there's a lot to do here and uh, if you want to cover all this or most of the country at least well you have to take in consideration that you have to do a lot of driving uh, I have made in just about one day, every day, around 400 kilometers a day, so uh, you should know that. But it's a very, very beautiful country. There are a lot of tribes and uh, you should come and see the Himbas. Uh, you will be able to see it in other videos of mine from Namibia, of course. Uh, the Hereros, the Namas, the Damaras. There are quite a few uh, very, very traditional tribes here, which you can still see the way they live today. Uh, what else can we say about Namibia, you should know? Well, the roads in around Namibia, most of them, I should really say, unlike in many other uh, African countries, are quite good. They're, they're, they're nice and, and uh, you know, up to date. But while you'll be driving through Namibia from one destination to the other, make sure that you know that there are a lot of uh, sandy roads and uh, those sandy roads can be quite difficult to drive on. So uh, be ready to, if you rent out a vehicle, you should rent a good vehicle, a 4x4, a Rev 4x4, so you don't get stuck anywhere because many people do complain about, uh, you know, tires uh, being 
punctured or uh, the car being stuck somewhere in the mud. If you come during or after the rainy season, you will find a lot of water puddles on the streets, on the roads, uh, maybe water holes, and some of them can be very muddy and uh, hard to drive. So uh, you should be taking that in consideration. Well, in regards to the water in Namibia, unlike in many other African countries, uh, the water in Namibia is drinkable. Yes, you can actually drink the water from the tap. And uh, the only thing is, you should know, it has a little smell or an aftertaste to it. Uh, you'll feel it also when you shower yourself. Uh, the water has some kind of a different smell that takes time to get used to. Uh, but of course you can buy uh, mineral waters everywhere. There are many plenty supermarkets here which are quite advanced. You can find everything. Well, in regards to safety and security. Well, most of the African countries when it comes to, uh, you know, close to 7 o'clock, uh, close to sunset, uh, the countries are shutting down basically. Uh, the same is with Namibia when it comes to around 7 o'clock. Uh, in the evening. This is when all the shops in Namibia are closing and uh, everything is shut down. You won't see many people around uh, after uh, sunset. Especially if you are a tourist, I uh, do recommend that you don't just uh, go around on the streets by yourself, all right, after seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, you can drive around somewhere, some places. Depends where and when. But again, after seven o'clock, it's about bedtime or nighttime, I should say. Uh, everyone is back to their homes, to their rooms, to their hotels, and uh, you should stay there until it becomes uh, morning. Uh, now, uh, the uh, winter and summer seasons here are the opposite uh, of many other countries, or at least different from the West. Right now, it is winter everywhere else, like in Europe or elsewhere in America, and here is summertime. Uh, you can see how hot it is in here. So, uh, yes, uh, the rainy season though in Namibia is in the summer, while in the winter, which starts from April to September, there is no rain whatsoever. It is just cold weather, but there's no rain in the winter, which is quite interesting. The rainy, heavy rainy season here is in the summer, but it's very, very hot here. So as we are talking already about the heat, and about summer, let me tell you something. Well, it is the driest country, uh, considered the driest country in the sub-Saharan Africa. And that's a good sign because at least you don't sweat. But it is very, very hot, especially when it comes during the afternoon hours. So you should be very, very cautious about that. Don't ever step out of your uh, apartment or hotel or lodge without, uh, you know, uh, creaming yourself with some uh, sun cream or any protection against the sun because it can get very, very uh, hot and the sun is very strong here. And well, talk to me. I'm as white as it can get and uh, <laughs> I have also got burned here, so uh, even uh, using uh, some protection. So this is also something you should be uh, very aware about. What else can we say? Well, here is another very special thing which I brought with myself. When you are here, you should be making sure you're bringing one of those with you. Well, they will give you here this spray everywhere you go i think uh, in most hotels and lodges they will provide you uh, the peaceful sleep spray the reason why i need that is because this country especially in the summertime is bombarded by many 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 mosquitoes and those mosquitoes if you are having uh, if you have sweet blood they will love you and they will uh, you know bite you as many as they can and as much as they can. So, of course, you must spray yourself, especially during the nights before you go to sleep and uh, all over your uh, exposed areas of your body so you don't get bitten by those mosquitoes, which can be quite a, uh, how should I say it? Quite a headache. <laughs> okay, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, yeah, uh, taxis. Well, let's talk about transportation. So. Uh, whether you rent a car or not, uh, renting a car is a good idea, but as I said before, you should make uh, sure that you are renting a good vehicle. 
a strong vehicle that can take you uh, around, uh, you know, heavy duty places like muddy roads. But if you don't rent a vehicle and you want to just use some taxis here, so in the cities there are, there's a company called Lifa, which is like your Uber in uh, elsewhere. And uh, you can just order them by a local application. And they are not expensive at all. Or you can just uh, stop a taxi on the road, a uh, local Namibian taxi, but like in many other African uh, countries, uh, taxis in Africa, uh, when usually when you stop a taxi, uh, they might have somebody on board already, or other people will join while you uh, uh, <laughs> drive with them to your destination. So uh, if you don't like uh, to take a taxi while others, you know, strangers are with you, then don't go with them but if you do you have no problem with that it's the cheapest way to go around what else have i written on the list well 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 yeah it is customary here in namibia well uh, not so much in the hotels which of course are uh, built for tourists uh, from the west but if you are visiting someone here or you would uh, uh, be staying in an apartment, a Namibian local apartment, a local house, uh, you should know that it's customary here that the houses don't have a door to the bathroom or to the lavatory, to the toilets. So it's just an open, uh, you know, an open door without a door to close. So if uh, you don't feel comfortable about that, you should know that that it might be in your bedroom, the bathroom might be another room inside your bedroom or your living room wherever and it won't have a door so get used to it guys and the uh one more thing i would maybe mention is uh in regards to electricity here there's no problem with electricity in namibia uh thank god uh you know in many different uh african countries you can get stuck suddenly without electricity well it happened here sometimes uh that i uh suddenly didn't have air condition or ac didn't work because of uh lack of electricity but most of the time 99.9 percent .9%, the electricity is very uh, well uh, here let me tell you one thing i didn't mention yet namibia is a gorgeous and beautiful country this i'm telling you it's a peaceful and lovely country and this landscapes are so gorgeous i can't even start talking about them you will be able to see it in all my other videos that i have done here the people are also very very nice i would uh, even go as far and say that i felt better with the locals <laughs> mingling with the locals around the black uh, namibians than with the white namibians which are mostly germans i didn't come to africa to meet the germans if i want that i can go to germany or stay in europe right so of course i have come to africa to meet the locals and the locals are very very good people as you will see in my other videos they are very friendly and very happy people so that's about it about traveling to namibia and the second part which i will talk about is coming very shortly <music> Let's walk around a little here uh, in front of the uh, Avis Reserve and Dam, right here. And uh, we'll continue our second part of the vlog, which I have on my list. Well, the second part, I said, will be more uh, talking Namibia, not in regards of traveling or in regards to uh, what you should do here or not and how you should uh, enjoy here it would be more 
about what I have experienced, have seen here in regards to the local life here or to the people of Namibia. It will be a more in-depth, I would say, uh, I would call it maybe an opinion of mine <laughs> about Namibia as a whole and what's going on here in terms of the locals and everything else. Well, as you know, Africa as a whole consists of many, many tribes, even from uh, back from uh, prehistoric times. And uh, still today, Namibia is one of the African countries which has, I think, the vast amount of tribes uh, and different tribes in Africa. Uh, they say they got like uh, almost 13 different tribes here. Uh, the ones that I know, at least, or are most famous for are the Himbas, uh, the Hereros, the Bushmans, and the Oshiwambos, and the Nama, the Namas, and also the Damara. So, basically what happened is, all these tribes came from many different uh, African uh, countries. Uh, and they all came uh, here to Namibia during many decades. And when the Germans have colonized Namibia, they have uh, divided them into groups and made them live each tribe in its own specific area. I would not go in now to the genocide uh, which uh, German has caused here uh, back in the 18th century and the war against the Hereros or many other non-pleasant, I would say, uh, history here, which they have tried to take control of places or a country, I should say, which aren't theirs to begin with. But only in 1990s when the independence of Namibia has started and just a few years later it became a democracy. Well, what I've seen here is like this. Let me tell you something very interesting. I have come to Africa originally, you know, to meet the locals, to see and learn about their culture and to mingle with them, as you will see in my other videos. This is exactly what I have done. So when I came to Windhoek, the capital city of Namibia, and I have seen this huge difference, the contradictive difference that you see the way uh, uh, the local uh, Germans live and uh, most of the city, the beautiful houses, the beautiful uh, villas, the gorgeous hotels and the beautiful businesses and uh, the uh, malls, which are all built by the Germans and have German influence here. And then you see just five minutes away, which is the township of Katatura, where the real African Namibian locals live. And you see this big difference of the way Windhoek looks and the way Katatura looks, where you have uh, those thousands and thousands of shacks all pushed together, one on top of the other, with no electricity. I don't even know if they have a normal running water over there. And you see the poverty over there. It really strikes you. And you cannot take a blind eye while you see that and thinking to yourself, asking yourself, how come nobody is doing something to help the locals here, you know? And even build them maybe uh, new uh, streets and new houses and provide them with a better life, with a more up-to-date and advanced life. Well, after speaking to many of the locals here, I found out that an average guy here, a man or women who works uh, for eight hours or more, uh, makes barely two and a half dollars, US dollars a day, which is uh, around uh, 40 Namibian dollars a day. So you can imagine how poor these people are. So this question was knocking in my head through all the time I've been here. I've seen this also in the city called Swakopmund, which is a very, very German influenced city. A lot of Germans live there. All the hotels are very uh, German styled, designed and built. You can see over there that the German people who live here uh, live in luxury while the uh, locals, the blacks, live in a very, very poor uh, townships and uh, in a very poor lifestyle. And nobody really cares, even their own government. So I was asking myself why that is until I've met a chancellor, a politician of Namibia, a very good lady, which I won't mention her name. And she gave me a little more of an explanation. Yeah, she told me a lot about the genocide 
that was going on here against her people. But she also told me that once Namibia was liberated at 1990, when the independence of Namibia came to effect, hundreds of thousands of locals from all different tribes came down from the north of the country towards the central uh, area of Namibia, where Windhoek is today, uh, where Katatur is today. And this is where they all came about. And when they came around, this was the only time, the first time actually, when the government here, which was a dictatorship up until 1990, was allowing them for the first time to build their own shacks. And since they have come by their hundreds of thousands in such a huge inflow from the north, they wanted to start living. They have built for the first time uh, their shacks and they start uh, their life there. So what happened is those shacks are built, as I told you, and as you'll be able to see in that video about Katatura, in a great, great density and very crowded. So even when the government wanted to apply electricity into these, uh, you know, these townships, they couldn't have really done anything because in order to make some changes or build some new houses and stuff like that, they had to move out a lot of families from their area and you know relocate them and those people did want that's why there isn't a lot of progress in those townships in terms of you know getting more advanced besides the story that those tribes although it is 2022 already they still uh, like the uh, lifestyle as they traditionally have been uh, used to for many 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 decades so it is very very hard to uh, you know make such a huge changes for such a vast amount of people in a very short time. So since independence has just begun in 1990, it will still take many, many, many years to come to really see uh, real progress. Well, uh, this is it for today. It is actually my last day here in Namibia. In a few hours, I will be leaving and taking a flight back home. Uh, it is quite of a sad day for me because I really loved this country and the people and the culture and I hope, certainly hope, that I will make it again here in Namibia. Namibia! 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 If you have made it to this part of the video, I'm pretty sure you have enjoyed it, didn't you? So let me recommend that you watch this one next. But before you do that, I'll really appreciate if you leave a big like and also subscribe if you want to enjoy more videos just like this. Peace.